There's a highway that stretches across the 93 days of summer where worship isn't offered to the sun, but to the smoking tire, the S-curve, and the spin turn. And if you ride it, make sure you do it in a Dodge Charger, Challenger, or Durango. Because on this highway, the lines being blurred are the ones between drivers and demons. Welcome to Highway 93. Dodge is a registered trademark. At Kroger, we work with local farms right in our own backyard to bring you food that's fresher than fresh. From homegrown watermelon that makes your mouth water to crisp corn picked right around the corner. Come pick out some yourself because shopping for local produce should be as easy as shopping at your local Kroger. Kroger, fresh for everyone. When you're a Boost member, you get free delivery, double fuel points, and lots more. Sign up at Kroger.com slash boost. Well, I will. I, I do, do subscribe to the reptilian in the sense that I recognize these symbols throughout history and I see where these people were and they do seem to be the adepts or the secret societies that are being talked about when it comes to the people of the serpent, the brotherhood of the snake. All this symbolism absolutely represented those in these cultures or these groups that recognize the cycles of reality that they weren't teaching to the masses. That's very clear. The snake is a representative of this cycle that uh, is not formulated and talked about in mass publication, basically. That's cool that you mentioned that, uh, Andy, because uh, Joel from Van Tessa is going to pop on and we're going to talk about the Brotherhood of the Serpent and shit. And that's going to that, that, I'm, I'm real interested in that. Very that's interesting one thing topic. I, yeah, I, I don't know a whole lot about it. I know more about like the cult of Akhenaten and stuff like that, which I think goes farther back than that. All right, welcome back to the fun and exciting talk at the tavern. Uh, this one was uh, kind of ladies' night. Uh, it was it was fun. We had three different ladies on. We had Leslie, we had Teresa, and we had uh, Abstract a- Abby. Uh, and uh, yeah, then I was also joined by Ryan, of course, and Andy from the Deep Share. And we get into a a nice spiritual discussion and maybe what the new world order and un might have in store for it so sit back and enjoy if you want the full episode patreon.com forward slash my third eye podcast five dollars gets you the full episode of this and every full episode of the regular show now there was no regular show last week because i had lost some of the files and was able to recover uh, my work thank god uh so Coming this week, we'll be putting out, you know, the regular episode. And if you want the full version of that, you know, $3 gets you that at, over at Patreon. Go over to the merch, My Third Eye, um, M-Y, the number 3, R-D-E-Y-E, for a promo code. Uh, gets you 20% off. And, uh, yeah, hit, hit me up on uh, Instagram as well. And go to YouTube. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Get those numbers up. I don't care if you watch, listen, or whatever. Just hit subscribe, you know, do me a solid, you know, I'm, I'm putting out all this content, you know, for you guys, and, and I love doing it, so, you know, hopefully one day I can start making a little bit of money at this and, uh, you know, get some better equipment, because apparently, you know, running on a dinosaur over here isn't working out that well, you know, I'm losing files and hope, thankfully getting them back, but having said all that, I'm going to jump out of here, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy your week, enjoy the tap. Right. Well, welcome back to the tavern, people. Let's uh, let's see. I bouncer sent me a message and said uh, there's people at the front door waiting to come in. So uh, yeah, let's let the people in. Come into the tavern. I know their IDs have been checked. They're old enough to drink. They're old enough to smoke. They're old enough to do whatever the fuck they want to do because this is the tavern and this is where they came to hang out tonight. So looks like we have. Uh, Andy joining us from the deep share. What's up, buddy? What's going on, man? Thanks for having me. Yeah. Teresa, how are you? I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Uh, I'm pretty good. Good. Leslie's here. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hello. hello. Hi, Leslie. Hi. Hi, Teresa. 
Hi. <laughs> are you turning your video on, Leslie, or are you leaving it off? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Ryan should be here shortly. How do Abby's I here? see everyone all at the same time? Oh. <laughs> there we go. We'll get her figured out. Abby, welcome back. Thank you. I was well, using the I wrong link. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I shouldn't say welcome back to, to the tavern. This is your first appearance, but welcome back to, to my third eye, uh, mm -hmm. which that episode mysteriously got erased off my uh, hard drive. So I felt like that was a really good one, too. How depressing. That was because uh, we had some shadow entities, you know, fly by me and got scared the shit out of me during that. So, yeah, it was, it was <laughs> bizarre. We had the some, call. Yeah. Had some bizarre uh, Internet connections. So. What's up, Ryan? I will not call you my trusty steed. I have to find a new nickname for you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that. What's going on, guys? Some new face. Hi, Ryan. What's up, Ryan? I'm going to call this not one much. Ladies Night. Finally have some <laughs> ladies at the tavern. So That's cool, man. Yeah, I'd mix it up a little bit. What's up, yeah. Leslie? And, and uh, Nothing. Amy? How are you doing? Oh, just the same old stuff over here. Yeah. Good to meet you, Abby and Teresa, looks like. Thank you. Likewise. <laughs> yeah. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. We can go around. So what I miss? Uh, nothing. Just uh, just starting out. So uh, I guess we can start with Abby and move to Leslie, Teresa, and Andy. Uh, introduce yourself. Let everybody know who you are, and we'll get chit chatting away. Well, hello. My name is Abby, and I call myself the Abstract Dreamer. I um, do Reiki trauma healing, and I'm really into dreaming, lucid dreaming, and dream interpretation. Nice. I am Leslie. I am Leslie, and I live in Scottsdale or Phoenix area. And I'm just a lover of podcasts. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I love all you guys. <laughs> awesome. Was it my turn? Oh, yeah, <laughs> try, try and do the ladies first in alphabetical order. I'm Teresa. I remember that my name, but <laughs> I'm Teresa and um, I have a newer show called the Spiritual Gangsters Podcast, where we kind of focus on people's like personal stories of transformation. Um, but it always kind of goes back to like the big picture, conspiracy wise, truth wise and spirituality wise, which is really cool. Um, and that is co-hosted with um, NY Patriot. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with him. And I also co-host on his show sometimes. Nice. Cool. Yeah, I'm Thank Andy you. from the Deep Share podcast, and uh, guys, I really appreciate you having me on here. This is great. I uh, on the Deep Share podcast, I do interviews. I talk to people about ancient history, uh, mysticism, symbolism, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy to be a part of this. Well, thank you for coming, uh, Ryan. Do you want to let everybody know, or are you just gonna? I mean, I'm here every week. I know. It's fine. <laughs> is that Ryan guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah hopefully people know where to find me no hope they don't they're dumb what do you got what do you got for us this evening dude did you find anything crazy out there uh i don't know brian stelter i guess is gone from uh cnn so that that was pretty pretty funny cool. there was some other shit that i kind of came across it was a busy day at work uh i was like fuck you know trying to get out on time and the new boss wanted all the fucking trucks washed and it was like holy shit so i didn't really get well, it i got this time. theory that i think alex jones and brian stelter are the same person <laughs> i love it <laughs> ever seen that no <laughs> i know about alex jones and bill hicks yeah that one i do know i i like that one actually i really dig it <laughs> that one i've been like threatened multiple times like if you don't understand this and you don't believe this <laughs> So if you look at how much Alex Jones hates Brian Stelter, I think that there's something there. Yeah, okay. I'm just, I'm not saying it's a, it's like gospel over here. I'm he's just saying so I'm old for being 34. He's way right. too, he, he is not, if he's 34, I'm 17. I, look right. it up. He's only mid thirties. I know, but that's it's what I'm crazy. saying. That dude's not, he looks older than like all of us here put together, dude. That yeah. dude is a, uh, it's insane. Rocking the Bill Cosby. What is that? Yeah, bald on top, hair around the middle, around the sides. <laughs> oh, the bozo! The classic the bozo. George Costanza look. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> we always call it the Bill Cosby before uh, all that show went down. 
Well, dude, so I I was just talking with um, uh, Catalyst, and did you know that he used to do adult movies? He used to be like male talent. I guess the guy's got a hog huh? on him. What? I guess Catalyst, so. Catalyst Jones? Yeah. And Ooh. I asked him, I was like, we well, got a big old hog or what? And he's like, well, kind of. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I These asked are the important questions. See- I, I mean, this is the thing, dude, you know, like it, it, I, you never know this stuff until you start talking with these people and then you just find out some mind blowing stuff. So I'm hoping that his lady listenership will skyrocket from here on out. Well, have because- you guys seen that like Jasmine St. Clair is also like made her rounds in like the truth community? Like she's outspoken. She, this porn star from the 90s is no, very no. interesting. Very interesting. All kind. Everybody's coming out. That's crazy. It's important. <laughs> yeah, yeah damn right <laughs> i hope he wasn't a fluffer no i don't think he was a fluffer but it was just very interesting to listen to like what he had to say about it it was just kind of funny yeah that, that's odd yeah that's, dude. That's, that's a, i've been trying yeah. to find mu- musicians and uh and things like that uh people that are kind of like adjacent to the biz but you know, lightly connected, like how do they feel about things if they're even reachable, which yeah. is usually a dead end. Anything with a blue check mark, man. Uh, like, I don't know if it's it's like a silly conspiracy to bring up, but like the fact that like I've never once I've been able to contact a lot of interesting people, very popular people, but anything with a blue check mark, it's as if I'm just filtered out immediately. Yeah. Is that like a common knowledge thing? Like, what is that? I, don't, I, I run into the same thing. The only blue check mark I was ever able to get on my show was Tommy Chong. He's the, like well, the only okay, blue check mark. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Blue check mark. He's on I, everybody's show. Yeah, he's humble enough to do it. But I've reached out to Jack Osborne. I've reached out to, you know, a whole, whole bunch uh-huh. of people just to, you know, hey, come on. Let's, I want to talk about your ghost adventures and shit. You know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> what's it like going into these haunted, haunted places? You know, no reply. Nothing. Hmm. Huh. I think a lot of those people don't even run their own social media. No, that's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's actually, um, my friend does strategy and everything. And he said that the way that you do it, you don't just come out and ask. You have to like every single one of their posts. You have to be one of the first person to like their posts, too. Mm, that's and then grosser. you comment. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> actually you stalk them. You actually have to stalk them for a little bit. And it's like then it primes it prime things so that way you can ask them so and it's usually and it works it so makes them feel much safe everyone. yeah i mean i guess that's like being a mm. member of the paparazzi mm. that, that, that's what that kind of sounds like so i mean i guess it is but not- i mean if you want them to to not think that you're <laughs> full of shit then right, you gotta yeah. kind of you Pursue gotta play the it. game you gotta <laughs> yeah. do it yeah it well, seems you, like opposite of the real world, like stalking someone in real in real life shit would get you kind of like in the face. Like I'm well, not talking really, that dude. <laughs> but I think that's the only way to get through the filter of whoever is running their social media. That's fair. Well, that's fair. Well, like, I think sure. this guy's serious. He's bugging the crap out of us. What do you think? Yeah. Well, or making like it? or making meaningful comments, probably on their that's stuff, fair. you know? Yeah, yeah, you have to comment. Commenting yeah. is definitely a part of it. You have to get noticed somehow, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just interesting to me that like the, the social media handler or whatever doesn't sit there and say like this dude, uh, cause like triangulating IP addresses is possible. Right. And it's not even that difficult. If, if someone's going to be crazy enough to do that, why wouldn't the, the handler be like, let's stay away from this guy. Instead, they seem to, as you say, Abby, like go, go closer to the people that interact the most. That would be a big turnoff in like the real, like tangible 3D world. And and it, for some reason, it's just not in the in the metaverse type shit. No. And and I'm not a huge podcast, but every once in a blue moon, I'll get weird people that just want to like they bombard you like with IG DMs and shit. And at first <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, OK, this is some pretty cool information that you're passing along. And then all of a sudden it's just like, all right, dude, you're you're just. A, you're over, overwhelming me, and B, I don't know if you're you're really a person or 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 what. But and then all of a sudden it just stops. It's like it, they start sending you like dog videos Weird. and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> or, or one, I, know I, I want to buy crate and shit. <laughs> I don't know what that is, man. Yeah, it's very interesting. But you guys are into some spiritual stuff, Abby and uh, and Teresa. It sounds like you were talking about some spiritual stuff because I'm I'm down to debate this a little bit. Let's do it. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm, I'm I really mean, into reality you know, trend surfing too. That's the other thing. So like the whole, I don't know. I don't, a lot of people haven't heard of reality trend surfing, but it's like, it's quantum physics. So what is it? Oh. Reality trans surfing is written by a Russian um, quantum physicist and it, it's a, a series of books, but um, it's kind of like my paradigm for reality, the way things work, the way shit works. It's based on Carlos Castaneda's work. Oh, can you break it down for dummies like myself? Yeah, I haven't heard. <laughs> I haven't heard of this. It's like law of attraction, but it actually uses scientific principles. So it makes more sense. It's not like all this hokey pokey and it kind of teaches you natural law. Like the fundamental natural law is that nature always balances itself. So any kind of excess potential, if I'm put importance on anything, it's going to be knocked out of the fucking ballpark i'm not gonna have it you know not in a good way it'll be like a foul ball because because i put way too much potential on it nature balances itself so that's like the fundamental principle but there's so much more to it so have you put much thought into uh like the cia's uh research on like the the um what the hell is, i have the packet right out gateway? there but it, the gateway process and all that kind of shit exactly yeah like their little blacked out Redacted it's not stuff. it's not redacted it's like a, it's a department of defense and cia i can go grab the the little packet out there that i have real quick but i just I wonder really looked at it before but it's definitely like 32 pages i mean it's it's very in depth but it's like a cia agent uh reporting back to the government from what he discovered by being positioned into the monroe institute and okay. uh, going through the process of binaural beat meditation and things like that. And he wrote this 32 page <sighs> insanity monologue, basically, about uh, a lot of things. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. You should definitely look at it. I will, for sure. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I've wanted to do a show on it, but many people have done shows on gateway process. Brian, I think you've covered quite a bit of it as well. Um, yeah, I, I actually wanted to topic. Do, I wanted to do an entire thing, but it's called the uh, it's from the Department of Defense. And it, the, the subject is analysis and assessment of gateway process. Yeah. And this is from 1983 um, to the commander of the u.s army operational group out of fort meade yeah it's just interesting it talks about like chakras it talks about like shutting off like different parts of the brain in order to you know like just kind of tap into people's consciousness at like you know different levels it's just to me when people like this start talking about this kind of shit it's very uh it's a turnoff to me but i don't know why is it a turnoff to you, though, Ryan? Because you're, like, really curious about this kind of shit. It seems like it's intriguing to you, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's definitely intriguing. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, <laughs> suspicious of the CIA, but I've had too many psychedelic experiences that, like, confirm. Like, we all know that, like, when they spread things, they're not necessarily spreading lies. They're spreading twists on the truth. So yeah. it's almost like... It's weird that they have that document. It's weird that it wasn't released until 2006. It's weird that we have a department that can request th secret things of the government that will suddenly become available to us as if they never knew that was going to happen. Like you and I actually personally have talked about that at, in detail about how it's, it's very confusing and intriguing that they even allow FOIA to exist yeah. or why mm -hmm. does it have to exist to begin with? Why is the government that works for the people uh, keeping these kinds of documents under lock and key, right? It's very bizarre. Because they're all magicians. <laughs> hey, that's my language right there. No, I think, uh, you I think know, we are, we're the ones with the power really, but they, right, they're just they like mimicking reversals. us or something. Yeah. They, use, they yeah. use reversals. And then the idea that reality is a mirror. So, you know, they just have to put whatever they want in front of us and we reflect it or get mad about it or get happy mm -hmm. about it or, yeah. oh yeah, but it's all the same. It feeds it energy. It's kind of that loose yeah. thing, right? But it's kind of a yeah. silly name for it. <laughs> kind of makes us sound crazy when we use the word loose. <laughs> I yeah, think Transurfing calls it a pendulum because a pendulum swings no matter which way you push it. And and it, it's just designed to steal your energy. It's, it's an actual energy structure. 
Well, and then you get into the pendulum group too, like the pendulum group, like working with the Nazis and shit like that back in, in, you know, obviously when Nazis and the third Reich were big. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that a lot of, um, and I like the idea of like, we're the ones with the power, but I kind of am starting to think that this is something that we kind of tell ourselves in order to feel like we have a chance of what's going on, like to, to rise up against what's going on right now. A I lot think of, that, uh, yeah, tomfoolery. Yeah. I almost, my thing is, I don't think that we need to, I think it's so individual. We think it's collective. Yeah. There's like so much false hope out there. Uh, in the collective right though like right like what ryan's saying like i could give it a great example being a fucking member of gaia for the past two years watching a lot of that content and it's like yeah there's little truth bits here and there but there's so much like personal philosophy and probably like bad philosophy going on to like rope in big groups of people towards like a certain thing, a lot of gatekeeping involved. It's such a shame because it's like this archaic revival that Terrence McKenna always talked about. There's a good part of it, but it's being kind of like hijacked away and explained away in a way, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does make sense. I I come (laughs) out with, I don't know. I personally think our minds are a lot stronger than what we're led to believe. Just like even with manifesting stuff and, and Ryan, this is, I know where I I lose you on this, but (laughs) stay with me for a second. When I went up to that cabin and I, I call you, we had a conversation phone call the day I got back or whatever. And I said, dude, I was toying around with this, this, you know, manifestation thing to see if it was re- real. The last two years we went up there, we didn't see elk. Okay. I, I said, I want to see elk. I will see elk. My wife said, oh, I thought I saw a bear. I want to see a bear so bad. And we saw two baby bear cubs. We saw four or five um, female elk and with, with their calves and, and what have you is that real or is that not because as a hunter i could i could easily say okay i'm going out and i'm getting a buck you know i'm going to shoot something with my bow and arrow and i'm going to bag it tag it bring it home put it in the freezer that doesn't always happen you know what i mean so i don't know is there power to intention i i know you don't like that but i i kind of think there is if the ether does exist to it to a point I don't have a a problem with the power of intention and things like that, but people apply it in in the worst ways possible. And I think that it it gets to a loony part for sure. Like real quick, it can go from like your idea of going out there and wanting to see elk and then going out there and wanting to see an elk to shoot it. That could be something completely different, Mm -hmm. right? You're, 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 uh, if you're hunting something, that could be seen as like a negative, like a net negative on right. the universe or whatever. Right. If we're going to get into that kind of shit. But I mean, if you're going to test your ability to see an elk, I would say sit in your living room and then like manifest an elk popping up in your front yard and see if that works. It's not going to work. It's not you know? going to work. <laughs> not that. That. <laughs> Something else will happen. Watch. I did that one time because I was like practicing little stuff and the Dicky is no importance. Right. And I was trying to, see bluebirds and usually blue jays aren't uncommon so it wouldn't have been that big of a deal but i didn't see one damn blue jay that whole day and i was kind of like irritated but then I, but i was like just let it go because it's it, it really doesn't matter you're gonna see it right i look over at my refrigerator and there happens to be this new magnet on my refrigerator and it has three a little angel holding three little bluebirds in her hand i was like tell me you got it, but just not how you thought you were going to. Yeah, get it. yeah. <laughs> it's just you can't put the expectation on it. It's that's always the case, too. Yeah, it's always it, uh, reminds me of like the end of uh, Dogma with Alanis Morissette being the representation of God, and when the character asks, "Why are we here?" and she's just like Meow, to her nose, and she's <laughs> like, "See ya, I'm going to go do <laughs> a have, somersault." You like, have the biggest you. crush on her. <laughs> <laughs> a Canadian, Morissette. yeah. When I was Canadian, younger. like me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail you, Abby. No, <laughs> I just not at thought all. of that. Well, <laughs> and and that kind of goes into Ryan. I, I told you this after my I think it was the first interview I did with Whitney Fox. 
And she did that reading on me and my, my grandfather's came through and this and that. And I was sitting there booming shingles to, to a, a roof. And I was just like, oh, I just want to see two birds today, you know, or whatever. And I didn't really put very specific detail to it, but two birds landed on my crane as I was operating it, which has never happened in the nine years that I've ever done that. And then all of a sudden they kind of flew up, flew down towards me, kind of at me and then just poof and never seen them again. But it was two birds. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't specific, but could have those been the spirits of my two grandfathers coming through saying, hey, nod my head at you. Here we are. We're watching you. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. I don't have the answers to this. Not, none of us do in my, my humble opinion, but I like I always say everything's all everything's theory. Yeah, I don't know. I think like manifesting, maybe it works just enough to get you to believe in it and get you hooked on it. Almost like chasing, chasing like a social media algorithm. Right. Like, oh, I posted this and it did great. So now you're like chasing that idea the whole time. I think manifesting kind of works like that. It's not that it's not true. It's like, yes, and intention and energy is how the universe works. Absolutely. But can, can I manifest a um, million dollars? No, like if we if we could all do that, we'd all have no problems in life. But you know why you can't do that? Because the key to in, to any intention and manifestation is heart and mind coordination. So you can wrap you your mind around. You, well, no, you can wrap your mind around a million dollars, no problem. But your heart mm-hmm. don't give a shit about money. It cares about experiences and feelings. So you will never, you will never tell your mind, your heart, that a million dollars is what it wants. It will never agree with you. So that's why you manifest shit you don't want. What if I really needed it? Necessity, maybe it it is. Could be. Well, what did you need it for? Yeah, (laughs) daughter is the experience. You could say, if I needed, what if I needed money to pay my rent? at the end of the month or my mortgage or whatever but it that's, is. That's not the but same. The problem as, as with want. that necessity is also that you're going to manifest like heart and mind coordination happens almost a hundred percent of the time over shit that you don't want and that you hate or that you fear. Think about that. Yeah. So that's what you talk about your bullshit in your life. You pull a bunch of bullshit into your life because you can, you have heart, mind coordination over anything you hate or anything that you fear. Yeah. It's the strongest for sure. Right. Cause it's yep. subconscious. Is that where you're going? It's, it's more than subconscious. I mean, I don't know. It is, so, but you have to have, it can't just be mental is my right. point. Well, yeah, I, no, I, get, it, you know. I get what you're saying. No, I get what you're saying. I used to, I was um, involved in yoga for a long time and like a lot of new age stuff. So I've kind of, I'm sure not as well versed in it as you are, Abby, but I have kind of been down that road a little bit. And uh, sort of in my conspiracy <laughs> rabbit hole career, I guess, I sort of like come out of it, I feel. That's where I'm at. But I know everyone, you know, comes to different conclusions. So I'm not saying that it's BS completely. I don't no. think it's BS. I think definitely like the universe does work on, on energies and intentions and our emotions and mind count for a lot. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, can we manifest exactly the life that we want? I don't think that we have that kind of control. When people say we're like co-creators of the universe, I'm sorry, I disagree. Not in the sense that Hollywood would present it, like things just abracadabra and appearing before you. Like Obviously, Mm. I mean, I think we're all on that page. But I think um, being more attuned with the patterns and the processes inside of you and uh being kind of in union with the idea that what is what are the patterns and processes that are inside you well they reflect the uh the world around you as well and the more you're in tune with that uh synchronicity it seems like you can kind of uh maybe not maybe manifest is kind of the wrong word to use it's kind of like like put into action what has been thought i mean this is kind of we're, we're kind of uh, we're out of time. I just interviewed someone the other day that uh, we were going over like the importance of alchemy in the 21st century. And it's kind of an obscure idea to bring alchemy in the way we kind of see it popularly with the hooded robes and all that kind of thing. But to bring the principles of alchemy into this world is not only what the old way 
does not like, but it's also what the new way does not like. Because the new way, oh, I think we can all go into our very tinfoil hat motives and see where this machine is heading. And it's about atheism and a fear of death. And let's cling to this physical mortal coil as long and in whatever way we possibly can. And the old way is, well, let's give all this away because the next life is what's important. Let's go to heaven, right? What uh, I would say alchemy kind of brings those two together and says, well, this is a kind of an equation and it kind of uh, brings this, con- this current linear moment into existence that we are all here to go, holy shit, hi. And then it fleets again and then it's gone. But this is like an alchemical situation that we're in. And it's it's not the new way. It's not the old way. It's kind of like a marriage between the good of both and a discarding of the worst of both. I don't know if that made any sense. Yeah. I think like, I think part of what you're saying, Andy, and then what you're saying, Abby is like being able to step into the flow of the universe just to kind of sound a little bit cheesy, but I think it's, <laughs> it's important. Once you become aware of your own internal processes and how that relates to like your external environment, that to me is like the most important part. I think. That's pre- trans is about catching the wave. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Have you, have you guys seen that show wheel of time? No. Oh. oh, it's so good. It you guys have to watch it. Yeah, it's on it's on Prime. That's where I saw it. It's uh it's a novel, very Game of Thrones meets like Lord of the Rings. It's really mm. cool and it involves like magic and there's so much symbolism, obviously. And um I think they hint at a lot of truths in it. But the uh females in the show, a lot of them are able to channel what they call the one power. Mm. So they they when they can like connect to it that's when like they can do all their like magical shit. It's really cool. <laughs> so, like Sacred feminine also kind of in line with like Dune with yeah. Bene Gesserit. It's interesting. Cause when men have the ability to channel in the, sh- in the show, the men go mentally crazy when they channel for too long. Only females can do it. It's weird. I was like, mm, that's interesting. <laughs> like, what is that saying about the male and female energies? Yeah. Well, if it's coming from if it's coming from Hollywood, it's like straight like programming, right? I mean, like that's what it is. (laughs) But like again, like they always love to use the truth and twist it to their liking Mm -hmm. because I think they understand that we as human beings, as like righteous individuals in this world, are gonna be drawn naturally to something honest. I, I really do think that. And I think that's why they have to try so hard. So it's like they have to use what's going to come out inevitably in our research, in our just living out our lives, generation to generation. They have to get ahead of what's coming out. That, that's my perspective. Like same thing with the yeah. alien UFO UAP thing. The reason why we have these heartfelt interviews from Lou Elizondo and all these fucking huh. actors from the government It's because they're desperately trying to get ahead of what's probably something's going on naturally. Maybe it's to do with the sun or whatever, but something's happening naturally that they're, I think, in desperation to kind of get ahead of and control the PR of in a way. Well, what about Project Looking Glass then or Operation Looking Glass? That's another really creepy aspect that all realities are collapsing in on themselves and somebody knew about it. But it's not. If you've ever read any of the Law of One stuff, then it's like, oh shit, that's totally in alignment with the Law of One. So Yeah, that's creepy. (laughs) I like it. Really, I think it's cool. (laughs) No, like I think it's cool and creepy at the same time. But But see, that's where Hollywood distorted it because Hollywood took that movie Eternals. And, you know, like the idea that we're created, like the earth is becoming a collective consciousness and, mm. and making the earth with like, we're all earth. And they made it like, oh, it's using every, losing everyone's energy and creating a earth God and the earth will explode and all these people are going to die and be traumatized. And it's like, no, just it's the law of one. So there it's a distortion again, you know, but I don't like the idea of all that stuff though. Cause it just sounds like, uh, it sounds like a, like a tower of Babel, like in modern times. Or yeah. Like you know, I agree it, with you, Ryan. Yeah. It's an I'm interesting sure. idea, but they make it, they disguise it in this really, really wholesome idea where like, everyone's going to love each other. No, one's going to be poor, all this bullshit, which is impossible by the way, that's never going to be a thing. People are always going to disagree there's never going to be a one world religion unless you kill off the people that disagree with this stuff. 
And um, I mean, think about another idea of like the programming from Hollywood. Think about like these these shows and these movies uh, for really the last decade that are, you know, artificially pumping up like feminist ideology. I'm I'm all about like men and women being equal. I think it's very, very I I think that a strong woman, there's nothing that makes a stronger man. Than a, but they're not better equal. Than a stronger we're woman. not we're not created equally. I'm not we saying created that differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm yeah. not saying that at all. But like Hollywood is pumping up the idea of the strong female intentionally. Yeah. Handmaiden's Tale, right? Oh, I know. Uh, all this shit where it's like, dude, the, the the women are the only thing, and that's it. And it's it's harmful, I think, in the end. And it is. It's it's funny to say this in front of three women who I respect. All three of you, <laughs> the same way I respect Kim, that's sitting in the living room right here, right? <laughs> We and we argue about shit all the time. And I think it's very important to have those healthy arguments and to not be like, yeah, women are more important than men or, or vice versa. But for some reason, it's very, very promoted right now that women have all the strength for some reason. That's- yeah, man, well, that's the fucking thing, right? I mean, not to sorry, Abby, just real yeah, quick. No, like, that's, that's the right. whole point, right? It's one or the other. It's always, it has to be one or the other. So let's, let's go towards the, and we'll attack the sacred feminine while we do it. Cause white by, men have been in power for so long. So let's yeah, go. The so other it's way. like a convenient psyop for one, like that's on one level, you know, of course, but like, but then we have the transgender level where, where we're destroying women's athletics. Right. And it's from both sides. Else. So right. it's like, so what is it? You know, it's cognitive so let's, dissonance. Let's, yeah, yeah, exactly. So or is it just that fucking pe- the pendulum? It's well, the because like we again. can't it's demonize more the pendulum, sacred feminine, yeah. but we also can't demonize the his hyphen story history that we've been taught to like not to say that it's all good to you know it's all big, true but like yeah. there's a lot of <laughs> this big, is about yeah, how all the world the religions shebang, have left yeah. out the fucking women and like a, like the, like the whole like. Yeah, it's just it's so, so funny that like though. we are moving towards a time like a very crazy time where we're about to re-demonize the sacred feminine instead yeah. of like embracing it where like, however, on the other end of it, it's like a parody of the sacred feminine going, of course, trust us. And it's like, um, absolutely not. As we march with our vagina hats on, right? Dude, it's, it's like- so that's the <laughs> fucked up thing that I my I'm mom was like original like bra burning hippie. And then I'm like, I'm like, like I was raised by a woman who didn't shave her armpits and didn't wear a bra. And then like, <laughs> now I see all these women who are doing this whole feminism thing. And it, it kind of pisses me off. Cause it's like, and- Dude, on she the would never wear a vagina it, hat. She would never. On the do other that. end of it, I hate to say this because, like, I know it's like closer to what we all can kind of agree with, but at the same time, you got these women. I don't know if they're paid off, but it's like purposely, overtly the opposite way. And it's like I love that my husband gets to tell me exactly <laughs> what I do from sunrise to sunset. And this is America. And it's like that's just discrediting people that actually love America. That's not real. That's fucking no. fake right there, too. It's hey, let me tell you offense. right now, dude, if I could take if I could take like a super rich chick that could tell me everything to do, but they paid all my bills, I'll take it all day, dude. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, Ryan. So, they're not chicks. That's derogatory. <laughs> women, sorry, powerful women, not chicks. That would My be a unicorn, and most unicorns I was told were um, most unicorns are transgender. Okay. <laughs> well true right (laughs) yeah well it's funny Uh, because i think the transgender thing like the blurring of the genders into one is kind of paralleling like the consciousness coming into one mm -hmm. and i think just that idea in my mind is very much like ai like the singularity and i'm like so the opposite of that should be like righteous individuality separation and division but I this don't is know. They're but we all have us. They're fucking hoodwinking us. Though. We They're do, giving us a false sure. version of unity to fucking follow. Exactly. Us. And it's like we'll a- throw the baby out with the bathwater and go, well, never mind. Fuck unity. It's like, well, <laughs> wait a minute. They're giving well, us like, a fucking bullshit it's version. It's like, let's. Let's well, have pride all month, and then here comes monkeypox, and we're gonna blame it on the gays. <laughs> I know, right? We're back to 1988. Oh my, like, what the fuck? What year is it? <laughs> oh man, yeah, no, I just yeah, like like you said, I think it's like a false representation. It's a, almost like a caricature of. And I, I think, think it's because like, a lot of people in the healing community, and I, I don't mean all the like super wooey new agers, because I'm I'm a little new agey, but not not. I'm rational. Okay. You're a scientific um, new ager. Thank you. Perhaps. <laughs> um, but 
you know, they're, we all have masculine and feminine energy. And then when they're out of balance, you're fucked up. You know, I was a very masculine woman my whole life because I was raised by a woman's liver. <laughs> you know, I didn't know I was allowed to like the color pink. That sounds mm. really weird, but I didn't, you know, I had to have somebody else. I, I had beg my mom to shave my armpits, you know, stuff like that. Um, but and because of that, I was like very in my masculine energy. It's actually just been recently that I'm like, it's okay to be a girl. It's okay to have feelings. I'm okay to, it's okay to express my feelings, you know? Um, and I think that's where everybody gets fucked is that like men think that they have to be super masculine and they're not allowed to have any kind of like femininity. And, um, and then we have this weird distortion happening. And then, then it's like, they've, they've made it exponentially bigger by like, oh, guess what? You're really a woman. Cause you feel like a woman or you're really a man. And it's like, maybe so, you just so need to freaking balance. You just need to balance yourself a little with that. Right. Being raised like that. Do you think that's why you cho- chose to go to the military? Because, you know, um, in the military, we're trained to, to, you don't show your emotions. So that was, I think, well, not I now. Was, well, yeah, not possibly. now when, when her and I, well, served, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, Tough you guy. didn't show your emotions, mm-hmm. you know, this and that. And Drop, it, give it me was some pronouns. Yeah, it was something easy <laughs> yeah. for you to to do because you were you were kind of already raised I, that way. Yeah, well, for sure that and um, yeah, I wanted it out of my little shithole town, so that was another part of it. Yeah, same. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, it was mostly like I knew I could handle it, and then I mean, I'm a bodybuilder now, so I still am very much in my masculine energy, but but I'm okay with I, I'm far more balanced i would say so there is for some reason right now in society um like if you go back to when men were straight up masculine and that was it and then women um unfortunately you know uh, there's a history there where women are kept down right and that's i I wish that that isn't the case but it, it is what it was um if we could find a place where men could be men and women could be just like, you know, feminine and we could like the, that could be like a battery in society. Right. You've got the men for sake of this argument. I'll say the men are the negative side. The females are the positive side and they are able to feed off of each other without one having like one side having to tap into both sides of that masculine feminine energy. I think that could be very beneficial if men were just tough and they were there to protect the family and the women were there to raise the kids also work. Right. I mean, like, I'm not saying that one side shouldn't work or anything. I do think that women have a knack for raising children, though. Yeah. Well, they're and the f- nurturer. Well, and honestly, like in a non distorted version of this, a patrilineal, pat, you know Paternal? what I'm saying? Yeah. Paternal? No, patriarchal. Patriarchal. patriarchal yeah patriarchal, uh, patriarchal, patriarchal yeah. society actually is the right model but you know it everything is distorted. so distorted and it's and like the saying. idea yeah exactly so it it really is a good model but then like this book that i was showing you guys the big shebang yeah this is like uh, i mean you just see where it comes from it starts at religion and it's indoctrinated in all of us from the day one i mean the bible is like we do the whole lineage of jesus right it goes um adam beget seth who who beget abraham who beget you know like it does the holy ninjas right not one of those motherfuckers begat anyone the women did and that's the only bloodline you can prove on any one of them but they don't mention any of the women they don't even mention adam and eve's daughters who happened to be one of them was the wife of noah did you know the name of noah's wife it's not mentioned in the bible her name is noria she was adam and eve's daughter Mm-hmm. How fucked are these little things? Where is like it that? mentioned? It's um, the Gnostic it Bible. Apo- oh, yeah, I was going to say the Apocrypha. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. interesting. So, it won't be accepted, so like, of course, by yeah. those that accept the. They just. Well, I it, think that goes. goes on. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think that's because, you know, it's a warrior culture, right? And it's like the 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 uh, the ways that, that society progressed back then was fighting, unfortunately. And that's really how it always is um and the men were the ones doing the fighting it's not i'm not saying it's right but it's just right. it's it's very interesting to think of you know uh yeah i'm uh back then back in the day if i was going to say my name like yeah i'm ryan son of paul you know my mom mary <laughs> it doesn't matter you know which is, well, is shitty my mom like did we, a lot of shit for me we but, take uh, the paternal last name usually right this is take my father's yeah. last name 
This is my favorite part though. And this is about period shaming. And it's like how women are shamed in the Bible just for having a natural thing happen once a month. Oh, they were it's shamed like, hard. Oh yeah. Well, it's not, a, not oh. natural. You ate a fruit. If a woman sits on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> and they, a, they were very disappointed because now first. you were like them. <laughs> when you ate of the apple, you became like them. Sorry. No one's ever. Like, I don't get it. Like, how has the story ever continued on as Yahweh being God after he addresses his counterparts as us when Adam and Eve become like one of us? How has the conversation ever continued beyond that? There is no I don't know, one the God in that I don't, concept, though. It's, it really I don't scary. know if they're, if they're they. referring to humans. Yeah, Elohim, oh, Elohim is not humans. Why not? Elohim is, they, I would think, they the being the, the chorus of heavenly beings, not human humans. But if Yahweh was above all the others, why would he consider Adam becoming one of us when he ate of the tree of knowledge? Like, that's always perplexed me. It's almost as if they give it away right there, that these were human beings. And these were lording over other human beings. Maybe I just opened a can of worms. I'm no, sorry. No, no, I like. No, it's fine. I, like just that. What, <laughs> I just what I wonder why you think they're humans, though. What, I'm one of those weirdos mean? that studies ancient Irish and uh, Scottish and Sumerian and, and all these other ancient uh, uh, Scandinavian cultures, and I'm finding more and more that this idea of fairy tales is about fair folk, the fey folk. It's about these old white people cultures from the north that keep getting. Uh, Basically, it's it's Shit a game on. of telephone with our language, like it's, the Targaryens or something. Well, uh, it, it is an interesting the Targaryen, Tartarian, blonde hair, right. purple eye, like all that kind of stuff. Right? There's a lot there. There's a lot there going on for <laughs> sure. But when we talk about yeah, like free folk beyond the the ice wall, fey folk, free folk, fey yeah. folk, fair folk, white folk, it's a lot of Irish history about these shiny white people with blue eyes and blonde hair, Ireland. Uh, Sumer, Armenia, Egypt, Mesopotamia, like uh, everywhere, South America, uh, all of them. They're all talking about white people with blonde hair and blue eyes. I had That's, an encounter with the little people, but they weren't. Get they the weren't fuck out. white. They weren't white, though. Well, and it's I'm, always interesting. I can't that talk I, about it after dark. You're not supposed to talk about ooh, it after dark. That's so interesting. That sounds like it. some gremlin stuff. I'm always just fascinated by like the the story of these gods, the shiny ones, shiny. And then it, it's where does it, very where do aliens play into that then andy well that's an interesting point and it's kind of a from my perspective it's really a long story and you'd have to kind of research some box saga and see some of that if it resonates the only thing some i know about box not. saga is everything i've heard you you, you break down and, I, <laughs> and i've always loved it it was always fascinating other than uh eating my own seed I, I, yeah I that, that's all some <laughs> fucked up shit but then yeah. again like the thing is about box saga is that like right. everybody's very averse to the idea that someone in history were <laughs> doing that meanwhile even to modern day we have semen retention in many cultures also we have dicks erected by all the ancient cultists all over the place to represent their uh, fertility rights. So like mm -hmm. sex was at the core of our ancient world, regardless as if we're comfortable with it or not. It's really a, well, it's a sensitive subject for sure. It it's really every, it's everything, literally everything. And when it, when it comes to like a primitive person, if you're looking at like proto human society, you're looking at a species that would naturally look from the inside out to uh, place priority and importance and what's What's yeah, what is if they're conscious shit? What is this concept of holy and what is literally important to them? It's this connection. It's it's all of those very primal, uh, dare I say, heathenistic ideas. Well, and and when this was time, when the whole world was taken over by the Catholic Church, the heathen world was completely fucking demonized. And a lot of that is really established history. We don't even have to go into alternative theories to see that. But we still, a lot of us in the truth community seem to uh, disregard that aspect and then uh, abide by what the Catholic Church says about anything pagan, anything Gnostic, anything heathen. And we well, go, the yeah, the pagans use the pentagram to represent um, the four elements and spirit. Am I correct? Or, or life? Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. 
and and well, what so are the got, four what are the four elements to you earth fire air water so air fire is not supposed to be one it's supposed to be the sun not fire or right sun. i mean so like, wouldn't that be fire though i mean not really chinese medicine there's five and metals one but yeah right. feng shui and everything too yeah it's weird i mean all that sh- all that shit's kind of crazy right you, but it, what i was going to say is in modern times with sex uh, we kind of like make fun of the uh, what, who is it like the the Orthodox or the Hasidic Jews that have sex through a sheet. Oh, yeah. The hole in the sheet. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's like that, yeah. that realistically, that's how it should be done, because if you're doing it naked, I mean, you're going to start like idolizing the bodies and you're going to start like sucking on titties and doing some weird shit. So, so you got to like, God forbid you enjoy it. it. Well, that's, yeah, that's where alchemy <laughs> comes into it. The physical plane is a part of this situation, too. That's so what guess, I'm saying is that if again, it's, you're if right. It's, if, it's, if it's procreation the male orgasm is the only one that matters because the woman's orgasm doesn't even factor in when it comes to procreation. Well, no, I'm not that's saying that. Fact. I'm saying like it's true, though. Well, no, it I don't is think true. I, that's an interesting point. I guess. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think that that's true personally, but I think that uh, good the <laughs> your, idea your woman's probably happy about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> ask me to point out where a clitoris is. I can't tell you, you know, but um. Hey, I don't think feel it, bad. It, I, th- I thought the woman peed through the peed out the clitoris in, until probably about five years ago. <laughs> the belly so, button? Yeah. What? <laughs> Where no, were you thought, guys in health class? You know, I, didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know women had a pee hole that was below the clitoris. I just because and, and my reasoning for this is because when guys or girls would get sex changes into guys, they would use the clitoris to make that into the penis or the penis into the clit, vice versa. So I just thought women peed out their 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 clitoris. And, oh, and and it, until our neighbor one time goes, you know, you dumb fuck, we have a pee hole and it's right below that. I'm like, women have a pee hole? I thought you peed out. No, no. Listen, a flat earther fuck. told me that you should just use your five senses and trust your instincts. So, I mean, you must be right. <sighs> yeah. I, I... Shows you how I retarded think the I am. idea of the of the, the woman, you know, getting there, so to speak. Um, it's the same way as the man. It should take a couple of seconds. If you love somebody and then it's just a quick thing. And, you know, obviously it's a fun, it's a fun time to be, you know, be yeah, uh, you what, know, doing what, some crazy a woman stuff. takes about three minutes in my, in, you know, and that's like, I don't feel like that's asking for a lot. No, sure. It's not. I'm no. just saying, like, <laughs> if we're talking about strictly, like, if we're going to get into this weird shit, right, I'm, <laughs> I'm more of the, the materialistic world. A lot of people. I don't know what we're really supposed to be talking about. So sorry. Uh, a lot of people in this conspiracy community think that I'm like too like materialistic. And I've been criticized about that a lot because I think that that's all that we have right now. I think that, yes, there is some sort of spiritual realm to stuff. If we're talking about the more like spiritual shit to stuff. I think that it's all about the the actual like the the uh, act of reproduction. If we're talking about more more materialistic shit like what I'm into, then yeah, you're getting into the fun stuff, right? And it's about like yeah, like I'll I'll give it to you, you give it to me, kind of thing. That but that's that's material. That is not spiritual, right? So I mean, if we're gonna go down that rabbit hole, then I don't know. Then There's got to be a be union a, between the two. You've never had a spiritual experience during sex, yeah. That's what well, I was I mean, thinking. I haven't. Yeah, wouldn't it be the I understand that it exists. Like the <laughs> orgasm the... seems like the spiritual experience, right? Yeah, well, that's that's fair. Yeah, it's very but similar can't to someone, a DMT turn Can't on. someone that you do not care about at all get you to that spot? I because mean, we're all one, brother. No, I dude. damn right. <laughs> fem- I think for a female, it's a little bit different. I'm sorry. I know that was contentious. <laughs> but no, right, I, I would I'm... just say, I think it's the opposite of what you said, Ryan. Like the procreation part is the material part. Mm-hmm. The spiritual the action. Part, yeah, but the spiritual part is the more the more fun part. We're talking about Sophia really? birthing the demiurge, huh? that evil <laughs> thing we talk about in Gnosticism. It's literally thought becoming action. I guess um, I, I, I I guess I see it opposite, but you know what? I don't know. Maybe that's why I'm not good at it. I don't know. I, uh... <laughs> I think you're funny. <laughs> if it ends in an O, you're good. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that that's interesting, though. It's interesting to think about which is uh, material, which is spiritual, for sure. Well, let me give you an example. Like, you watch but, The Da Vinci Code, which was like a blockbuster movie. You're going to get like a fucked up, retarded version of what all this information is. Mm-hmm. Because it was like on purpose, almost. It was like handed to us on a silver platter. And, you know, when I watched that originally, like I had done psychedelics and I was kind of 
like quote unquote awake. But at the same time, I was still obsessed with movies. And I had this idea that like some of these directors, man, they're like trying to get messages to us, dude. They're like trying to give us the truth or something. Yeah. I don't know if I believe that anymore, but I know that they're unavoidably pointing to the like many truths like on accident or on purpose. I'm not sure what's going on, but like there is a framework there. That's like, if you see it, you can kind of play with what's going on there. And like Da Vinci code is like a perfect example. It's like, let's give you a perfect story about this Gnostic perspective. That's not the fucking Gnostic perspective at all. And they'll just throw that to you so that all of the conspiracy theorists will go towards that. And it's again, it's just hoodwink after hoodwink after hoodwink. If that okay, so what do you think with the Gnostic thing? What do you think? Did you watch the new Matrix movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that in the theaters with my wife. What did what did you think? I, I still want to s- like, I still want to see it a second awesome. time because yeah, like I I feel like too much of it bombarded me all at once. Like it was a fast movie and it was much faster paced than a, obviously a movie made 20 something years ago. Everything is a little bit quicker. But like the uh it felt really uncomfortable and artificial the way they kind of gave all the power to trinity and as a huge fan of like the archaic revival and the idea of the Mm -hmm. divine feminine this felt very forced and maybe that's because i'm old and i've been dealing with the topic for a while maybe to someone young this is like yes and it's a good thing but i don't know it felt very artificial and weird to me well see i didn't even want to watch it because i I have to be really careful about what i let in i i don't i don't watch a lot of tv because i feel like you know, yeah. Well, my dreams told me not to. <laughs> oh, geez. I'm still I, watching 80s action movies. I'm fucked. <laughs> well, I was just, yeah, my dream kind of gave me the message to spit it out. Like, if it's bad for you, you better not fucking eat it. And that's, that was talking about media pretty much. So, um, but I watched it anyway against my better judgment. And I was, I, so to me, I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised because I, I didn't know, have any clue, but it was like, Oh, this is the story of Sophia. So. Hmm. Yeah. I can resonate with that. Can, yeah, can you that elaborate on that? What, what I, I'm not familiar with the story of Sophia. Sophia is the, uh, okay. So the, the reason why this book is called the big Shebang is because we hear about the father, the son, the Holy spirit, right? Mm-hmm. Where's the woman in there? Immaculate conception. There was no need, no need for a woman. I, she was just the slave to the baby. She was holy Man. ghosted. God the mother was holy ghosted. She's the holy ghost. What? Yeah. Come on. It's kind Don't of fun. Uh, so Christ had a sister, a counterpart, a feminine counterpart called Sophia. Mm. She's the first one. She's actually the one who created the earth, technically. And um yeah isn't that gaia in other languages like mother earth um maybe i yeah in other languages but but like even the story of adam and eve is like eve's name was zoe which meant she was like living she was the first one created she came first technically and um adam was created by yahweh and yahweh is actually one of the demiurge or whatever the if we follow the connection to sumeria he's he's enlil through and through he's what? the big evil brother that watches he, over yeah. everything and he's the archon he's he's and he's wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't that make eve anki then no or is that, that would, Lilith? yeah no um actually i don't yeah. i couldn't even so get into the whole Lilith. Lilith i would say Samuel. i would say well if comparing yahweh to enlil the serpent is anki okay. the Samuel. one that gives knowledge well, this says that the serpent is Eve. Eve was the serpent. Okay, she no, was raped. By, yeah, she was raped by. She she basically was given the god particle, and so she actually um. She pissed off what's his name, Yahweh, and when she did that, <laughs> she had to. He wanted her you know god guy. consciousness because he created Adam, and Adam had no life, so he wanted her spark. So she put it in a tree. And in the tree was happened to be the snake. And so the snake also got the, the God particle. And so the snake told her to eat the fruit. So she'd remember who she was. So when she ate the fruit, she was able, you know, so the snake was Eve, the tree was Eve and the apple was Eve. And Eve was the spark of life that gave Adam life. I like so the idea 
the most of uh Adam being like an atom and then mm-hmm. Eve being an electron, like like yeah. the whole like mm-hmm. Adam and that, Eve. Yep. That idea is kind of cool. I like that. I don't know it's, if it's it's weird that it oddly fits, right? Like it doesn't have to really mess with anything yeah. else or anyone else's philosophy about those characters. It just like it fits and it's yeah, okay. The to man and think woman that. still it's the ma- masculine, feminine, the positive, the negative. And that's like that's what's missing from the Trinity and from all these other world religions. It's always a man who's the father. There is no there because is no all religion mother. and all history was written by man. And that's where I have a hard time with a the lot distortion. of distortion. Yeah. And and Ryan and I have had these conversations where every religion has been passed down by man and, and written by man. Whether you take the Bible, all the stories of Jesus were written hundreds and, and sometimes thousands of years after his supposed death. Uh, the, the, the Old Testament, all written by man. And it, it, it's always controlled by man. And I'm not sitting here trying to say, hey, everybody put on a pussy hat. But yeah. at some point, <laughs> you, need, sex is best. Yeah, you need to you need to bring the feminine side in because I can't have my daughter wouldn't exist without my ex-wife. You know what I mean? I, my dogs wouldn't exist if they they didn't have a a, a, a female dog. You know, you have to have the a male bitch. and the female a bitch. Yeah. You know, if there's a they man, then they depend on us throwing out one or the other over and over again. The pendulum yeah. swinging back and exactly. forth. Exactly. It's, it's dividing stay out of balance. The Galen it dialectic. Is. Absolutely. Well, sponsor and for the first hour of the tavern is nothing because I just wanted to get everybody's reaction. I love that. I want to buy more of that. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> there's another interesting <laughs> story about Genesis. Week I got, got everybody with all natural beer. <laughs> You guys want to hear another interesting yeah. take on Genesis? Tell us. I heard this from Dun 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 of Freemason. And <laughs> but the, the, the funny part was that he like acted like it was like this deep throat situation and he was giving me some amazing information. I'm like, oh, so like very similar to like Gnosticism. He's like, well, sort of. <laughs> I'm like, no, it, it pretty, but it's, it's interesting to say the least. Cause not a lot of people kind of have heard this take on it. It's interesting where, um, when Adam eats the apple and, you know, gains the knowledge, he, he uh, well, it's Eve. Yes. But then Adam, cause it's given to Adam, but, um, oh. when they both eventually eat this apple, uh, the, the story goes that they, they hide because they're ashamed that they've done what Yahweh has, has asked them not to do. But the way that this guy explained it to me was that they hid because they had eaten the fruit. And because they ate the fruit, they knew the difference between good and evil. And then they hide from Yahweh. And like, he had me look it up in the Bible. I'm like, okay, all right. Well, it does kind of follow that plot line where like they only hide because they're afraid of who's noticed in the garden. And it, they, they, they claim they see, that that they see gives away the, the idea. They, it gives away this idea of the old world that, Hey, this isn't uh, this isn't God. This is actually a character. This is another warlord. This is someone in our history. It's really interesting. Hey, what's really interesting that I'm finding interesting is I'm um, really kind of going deep into the Carlos Castaneda stuff. And he Don describes Juan. it. Yeah. And they describe the difference between the tonal and the nagual. And the tonal is everything that you can perceive. So anything that you can pretty much name with language, but your perception of everything, everybody has their own tonal. And then there's, a collective one as well so it's like everything that's on a table in front of you that's that's your tone it's your island right of perception and then a is everything that's not there and somebody asked like like what's under the table pretty much it's the magic but like he asks well you know well so god is god part of the nagual and he's like no absolutely not god is an idea that you have that's part of the tunnel. That's that's something that you've constructed. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. I'm a king of rock. There is none higher. Sire MC to call me sire. To vote my kingdom, you must choose fire. I won't stop rocking. Now we rock the party, it's the correct, all set on time. 
from the storm Into this house we're born Into this world we're thrown Like a dog without a bone An actor out on loan Riders on the storm And the music was good and the music was loud Great wide open when you hear it. Dinner time. When you're hungry, you're not going to let 5,000 feet of mountain get in your way. And if they try, that's what Kia's lineup of exceptionally capable SUVs with available all-wheel drive is for. The Telluride, Sorento, Sportage, and Seltos are how you know we take this pretty seriously. The SUVs and the dinner. Hurry into your local Kia dealer today. Kia, movement that inspires. Visit Kia.com for details. Always drive safely. There's a highway that stretches across the 93 days of summer where worship isn't offered to the sun, but to the smoking tire, the S-curve, and the spin turn. And if you ride it, make sure you do it in a Dodge Charger, Challenger, or Durango. Because on this highway, the lines being blurred are the ones between drivers and demons. Welcome to Highway 93. Dodge is a registered trademark.